Hello friends, and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen, and Happy New Year! Last year taught me that nothing is more important than togetherness, and this recipe is all about that. According to my research, aka intense googling, dry pot was first popularized in the Sichuan province of China. It's basically a soupless version of hot pot, the interactive nature of which pulls diners closer over a shared meal. Kind of like the way Korean barbecue and fondue are about much more than just the food you eat. Let me know if you want me to do a video on vegan hot pot with this soup, but for now, let's get into vegan dry pot fish. Shout out to Wes who emailed me back in November to request this dish and sent me on that googling adventure. Because while I loved hot pot growing up, I actually never heard of dry pot before. Dry pot starts with a super aromatic oil infused with a bunch of spices and a couple special ingredients. You'll want cumin seeds, not ground but whole so they don't burn, one star anise, a cinnamon stick, a bay leaf, a couple clove buds, and Sichuan peppercorns. Make sure you get the whole peppercorns that are nice and fragrant, otherwise you won't get the full citrusy peppery flavor and that mouth-numbing mala effect that is so special from Sichuan cuisine. Include a whole black cardamom smashed with the bottom of a hefty mug or something like that, and a dried tangerine or mandarin peel. This one's homemade. It's kind of labor-intensive to make yourself, plus store-bought tangerines or mandarins aren't always super fragrant, so save time and your hands by buying them from a Chinese grocery store or herbal shop. I'll put a link in the description so you can find them online. Also, they are normally dark and not as pretty, just so you know, since they are sun-dried and aged, but honestly, they're probably better than my homemade version made from subpar store-bought mandarins. You'll also want some fermented chili bean paste, the same kind we used for mapo tofu, aka doubanjiang. Spicy, salty, with that fermented flavor that is similar, kind of, to soy sauce. As always, the full recipe with ingredients, directions, and any notes for subs, where to buy spices, and stuff to watch out for is on marystestkitchen.com, linked in the description box. Dump the dry spices in your wok or a small saucepan, turn the heat to low or medium low, and you can add a quarter cup of oil. I'm using canola as usual, but you can use any oil you like that has a neutral flavor and can take high heat. Make sure the spices have good contact with the oil. So why didn't I use a small saucepan instead? Answer: Laziness. Keep the heat on the low side. We want enough heat so the flavors are drawn out into the oil, but we don't want to burn anything. By the way, you can multiply the spice oil recipe to make a bigger batch so you can store for later use. Just store the extra oil in the fridge after you strain it. This will go on for 20 minutes, so in the meantime, prep your vegetables for the stir fry, maybe switch on your rice cooker, and bake up that vegan fish. I'm using Gardein fishless fillets because they are just perfect for this dish. Not spawn, I wish, but they are my actual fave. You'll want to lay them out on a parchment-lined baking sheet and bake in a preheated 425 degree Fahrenheit oven for 20 to 24 minutes, flipping halfway through. When the fillets are done, I just turn off the oven and open the door but keep them in there so they stay warm. Your oil will be done as well, so go ahead and fish out the dry spices. Add in the fermented chili bean paste, turn up the heat a smidge towards medium, and let it fry for 15 seconds or so until it gets fragrant. Then add the whole dried chilies, green onions, smashed garlic, and ginger. The dish won't be very spicy as is, but you can cut into one or more of the chilies if you want to turn up the spicy heat in this dish. Stir fry for 3 to 5 minutes for the flavors to infuse, but don't let the chilies burn. Then you can push those to the side and add your veggies. I'm using 1 orange bell pepper and about 3 cups of baby bok choy. Pop on a lid and turn the heat to high for about a minute to help that choy cook quickly. Oops, I almost forgot my enoki mushrooms. 
The mushrooms take no time at all. The bok choy just a couple of minutes and we'll leave the bell pepper with some snap to it. Now we can add our fishless fillets and fold everything together. You should give it a taste and see if you want to add some soy sauce or white pepper. I'm just going to add some fresh cilantro. Have some tea on the side, get some rice in your bowl, and dig in. The only thing this meal is missing is... some friends maybe? So for today, I'll just pretend I have company, but this tastes so good, I really don't mind having it to myself. The flavors are so wonderful. Ginger and garlic, that fermented chili paste, and a hint of citrus, and that addicting mala, mouth-numbing Sichuan peppercorn. Not too strong in this dish, not as strong as in my Mapo tofu. And the Guardian fishless fillets are flawless as usual. It really takes on the flavors so, so well. And how about that texture? Amazing. This recipe should serve three to four people. Feel free to multiply the ingredient amounts for more if you're having a bigger dry pot party. Just extend the cooking time for the vegetables a bit, but the timing for everything else should stay the same. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer. Or you can comment on the recipe page on marystestkitchen.com and let me know how it goes if you do make this. Maybe take a pic and tag me on Instagram. I simply love seeing what you do with these recipes. Thank you so much for watching my friends and thank you so much for the love and support and the personal stories you shared with me over the last year, especially last month. It was hard, but reading all about your own experiences really did help me through. And well, to be honest, it is still tough, but I'm looking forward to this new year. No resolutions for me, but I'm really focusing on family, cherishing time with loved ones. Anything you're going to be focused on this year? Let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you. Anyways, thanks again. Plus, extra thank yous to my sweet channel members for your ongoing monthly support. I appreciate it so, so much. Bye for now.